say Steve here, woodworking masterclass. Oh no, I haven't got my right apron on. It's in the wash. If it doesn't fall apart, I'll have it on next time. This this is a this is a a very early one. Fine boxes. When I used to do a lot of fine boxes. Had a query the other day about cutting timber. So here's a great little hack that'll help you cut timber straight using a handsaw without any fancy jigs or any guides or anything like that. Just a very simple process that will help no matter what saw you're using. In fact, I'll do it with three different saws. So the first thing is, you got to knock yourself up one of these things. A bench hook. Very easy to do. You most likely got the scrap lying around the shop floor that you can use. The reason I like using the bench hook, because if I'm cutting timber on the bench and I cut through, I'll mark my bench. So if I've got it up here, I've got an air gap underneath there for the saw to rest. And if you like, you can put a little bit of sacrificial plywood under there or put a mat under there, something like that. So all right, all you need is a knife, a chisel, I'm going to use a paring chisel, but I'll show you how to do it with that. And a square. Make sure you've got a straight edge. Square. Mark out where it is you want to cut. So I might say oh, I want to cut in. There you go. 50 mil in from there. And put your knife in the mark. And then move the square up to the mark like that and give it a score. A couple of scores if you're feeling good. And that is it. Timber in the bench hook. And with the chisel, run the chisel on the inside of that line. Now I know a lot of you saying, oh, I haven't got a big chisel like that. That's a paring chisel. You can use a normal chisel. The only reason I use the paring chisel is because I can get across this board easy enough. This one's going to leave me a little short, but that's okay. I'll show you how to overcome that. So you just push that up as far as you can go. Now, of course, you can, if you want, come back the other way. And go down that side. That will give you a nice score across there. Or the other way is, which we will do over here. Let me cut this bit. Okay, we'll cut another one. A couple of cuts. Up as far as we can go with this chisel. And now I've run out of space because this is going to bind when I try and push it all the way through. So what you can do is then you come back and hold your chisel at an angle and just cut up to that line that way. And that'll still give you the same result. Clean any rubbish that's left behind out with the knife. And that will give you a nice crisp fence that you can drop your saw in. Now, with this too, you've got to have this on the waist side. So this one I'm cutting because that's the length I want there. And this one I'm going to cut because this is the length I want here. So first of all, I will use, I'll use a ordinary rip saw. This is an 8 TPI, so it doesn't really matter what you use. And you just gently guide it up against that fence. And as you start to cut on that fence, gradually drop the saw down until the teeth are leaning up against that fence. And that'll give you a nice cut. Make sure your saw is uh, 90 degrees or perpendicular. And then once you've got that saw cut going, use the whole length of the saw. Don't rush it, don't force it. And it's the weight of the saw doing the work. 
And when you're coming to the end, you can turn it over or you actually take the weight of the saw in your hand and you allow it to go down slowly under your control. That way you'll get a clean cut when you finish. Don't rush it. There you go. Now we have two fairly nice cuts. Now that's using a 8 TPI and yeah, it's a bit rough, but the saw is an 8. It's not meant to give you a smooth cut. And if you have a look at that, that is nice and square. And also pretty square that way as well. Now I'll try it with a Japanese saw. We'll use this next cut. Remember the Japanese saw cuts on the pull stroke. And again, you just leave it up there, start here, let your saw blade sit up against that fence. Don't rush it. Let the saw do the work. Let it cut at its own speed. Keep it at 90 degrees for the timber you're cutting. Now when I'm nearly through, I ease up any pressure I do have and allow the saw to just sever those fibres. You have a look at that. That's cleaner than this cut here because it's a much finer blade. But again, we're square and we're square that way. Might do one more and we'll use, um, let me see, a tenon saw, there you go. So, mark with the knife. Chisel. Now if I want to keep this piece, what I do is turn it around and I would actually chisel up here, but for the exercise it doesn't really matter, so I'll throw the chisel at this bit and we'll have this piece as a save bit. Get the knife, just run it down that cut again and that gets rid of any of the little dags that are still in there that are going to interfere with the cut. We've got that nice fence there for the saw to be guided by. Get a tenon saw. And then again, start off slow. As you get the toe of the saw in, you can gradually bring the heel down. And you can hear it, I'm almost through, you can hear it. There we go. Check up a square. And it's square. So I hope that little um, hack on sawing helps you out. Just practice and give it time. Don't force it. Make sure you saw sharp. And I've done a video on saw sharpening. So you can check that out a little later on if you like. And uh, enjoy your woodwork. In the meantime, this is Steve pulling the shed door down the zone. Remember to keep it sharp. And more importantly, Keep it safe. Look after yourself. And I look forward to having you in the workshop again very, very soon. Hopefully I'll have my right apron on. Until then, bye for now.